A new report confirms all Australian capital cities have experienced a severe decline in rental affordability this year. It's also indicated wages are failing to keep pace with rental costs. Joining me now is Emma Greenolch, CEO with National Shelter. That's the group behind the Rental Affordability Index. Thanks for your time. I guess just first of all explain the index. So how, how do you determine rental affordability? Yep. So rental affordability is generally determined by uh, the proportion of income that people pay on their rents. So the threshold is 30%. Uh, it's an accepted threshold that's used nationally. Um, so if you're if you're paying 30% of your income at rent, you know you're you're facing you know an affordability um, you know sort of barrier. But and every percent over that, that's right, crimps more into what you should be able to. to spend to get by basically exactly so so what we have with the index and there's heat maps for that is it shows that you know there are households out there particularly the low income households that you know are spending you know upwards of 50 percent of their income um on rents uh, mm. which is you know severely unaffordable and, and so what's going on we had this great sort of migration pause did we just stop building enough houses at that time look i think i think what we're seeing in terms of the the issues around rental affordability, it's a, it's a number of things. I mean, vacancy rates are incredibly low nationally, not just in capital cities, uh, but also in regional, you know, and rural areas. Uh, housing supply is a factor, you know, as, you know, we're, we're not building enough housing for the demand um, that is out there. But I think also, too, we've had people that have, um, you know, through the pandemic, they've had their tree change, their sea change. So in areas where there mightn't have been a lot of housing to start with, you know, it's had a, had a severe impact. I guess it's interesting because some people push for build to rent and we don't do a lot of that. Some countries have a huge build to rent market. Mm. Is it a cultural thing? Some people think renting's not a good thing to do, but if we shift our mindset a, a bit and even shift, you know, the rewards for buying a house, which are mainly in retirement, mm. then renting won't be so bad and maybe there'll be more of a market for it. What's your view on that? Yeah, look, I think uh, built to rent definitely has a role and we're seeing governments, um, you know, in state governments that have been investing in um, affordable build to rents. Queensland is, you know, one of those um, states that are doing that. Um, but, you know, renting is becoming such a more normative experience because the costs of renting, you know, are impeding on households' impacts. Uh, ability to save, you know, for a deposit. So, so it's becoming much more normal. Um, and you know, for for some, it's the waiting kind of area until they they purchase a home. What does it say about? There's been various pushes over the years, obviously, to remove some of the tax breaks for a property investor. If they were to remove, does renting get even more expensive? Yeah, look, it, it's a good point. Um, you know, and we know that the federal government, you know, um, in the 2000 election, uh, you know, this, the most recent election, you know, removed all of their tax reforms um, to take to the election. You know, we would like to see the removal of those. I mean, not necessarily as a blunt instrument, but maybe grandfathering of those. Um, I think to reduce some of the incentives around holding multiple properties uh, for property owners. Um, but, but, you know, what we need is, you know, a, a response that covers, you know, a range of elements. So it's not just the tax system. It's if also... you just change that overnight, it would the initial period for at least a few years would be increasing rental property prices, wouldn't it? Not, not necessarily. I mean, you may see that some people exit the market, um, you know, property owners. I think, you know, one of the reports that came out yesterday from Uhuri points to, you know, that there's a number of factors, um, you know, that influences landlords, you know, uh, why they leave the market. And, you know... Um, capital gains could be one, you know, that they invest for a period of time. You know, there's there's a range of motivations. So um, mm. I, I can't sort of say that, you know, doing one thing uh, right. will, will, you know, have an impact across the board. One other interesting thing when it's... when laws have changed, one particular effect in Ireland when essentially there was a big shift away from um, investment property towards owning, is the rental market really dried up? And one reason was... The average, there are more people that will live in a rental property on average, share houses and so on, mm. versus a property you buy. So do we really need to ramp up supply before we made any of those sort of changes? Because I know it sounds, it sounds sort of counterintuitive, but mm. the more I read about this, you go, well, rental houses tend to be fuller. So they're, yeah. a, they're a good use of our 
housing market yeah. in one sense? Look, I, th I think uh, definitely in terms of ramping up supply, but it's not just market supply. You know, we've seen a decade of relative inaction of social and affordable housing. So, you know, we, we have considerable unmet demand and we don't have enough social and affordable housing to meet that demand. So you're having very low income households having to rely on the private rental market when, you know, they could be in social or affordable housing. So it's a housing supply issue. It's a social and affordable housing supply issue, but it's also an income and wages issue and a Commonwealth rent assistance issue as well. In other words, complicated. It Isn't is. Greenhouse, thanks for your time today. Thank you.